everyone. How's everybody doing this morning? How's your baby? Hans, babies was good as of five o'clock this morning. <laughs> no, um, Henry has decided that sleep is kind of not needed during the night. During the day, it's very needed, but during the night, not not as much. So, uh, but no, I was. Um, you know, my wife and I try to take him. I try to help out as much as I can. I, I do sleep fairly heavy, so she has to usually shake me to get me up. But, um, but no, I was up with Henry this morning at five. Um, got him better on midnight, and then I think he was up once or twice during the middle. Uh, so, so yeah, we're, but uh, hey, that's why we have these coffees and coffees with Tyler, and you know, all sorts of fun. So, but no, thank you for asking. Um, Hunter and Hunter and Henry are, are doing quite well. Um, figuring it out, so. Does Hunter like him? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, as long as he's, I have to play defense when he's throwing blocks around, but outside of that, you know, they, they get along pretty well, so. Whether that's the case, you know, two years from now, that's to be seen, but uh, two months in, we're, everybody's heads above water, so. So yeah. So what's on everybody's mind? The acoustics. The acoustics. In the dining room. In the dining room. Mm -hmm. What about them? No, they're not good. Not good? Uh -huh. I thought they were better. Yeah, I, I thought they were better. better. <laughs> I thought they were better than before. Too loud? Um, not for me. What, what's oh, wrong, Betty? The acoustics, the acoustics in the dining room, um, Betty's saying, are, are not good, I think is what you're referring but to. But other people think they're okay. They're too loud. Is it the music or is it the discussion and the echo? The discussion and the echo. Yeah, the sound just bounces around when you talk, and um, so you're getting ambient sound from all the other tables, and you're trying to have a conversation. It's sort of like sitting in the gymnasium, only not quite that loud. You know, but it's just, there's the noise is like, it goes everywhere. And there ought to be a way to baffle some of the I wonder if it's certain parts of the dining room, because I have not experienced that. So no. I wonder if just certain parts of the dining room. We were talking about, we've talked about it several times at different tables. So oh, okay. There are, okay. there are people that are okay. having a lot of trouble. Okay. Well, that's great feedback because again, um, I know that was a concern when we talked about the dining room before construction, because we talked about, you know, obviously it, for those of you that were here prior to what we have now, right, the, the old dining room as I'll call it, um, with Gilman now it's much more open, right? I mean, it's, it's a little bit higher ceilings and, and much more open space, and so that was a concern. I'll go back to our interior designers, because there are certain levers, so to speak, that we can pull to help absorb some of that noise, I believe. So um, that's, you know, we wanted to touch, feel, and hear, hear the space, so to speak. Um, so that's great feedback. So now I have that to go back to, to the residents. I mean, I talked with Majarka and, and she hasn't mentioned it. Um, again, not to say that it hasn't been mentioned to your servers and things of that nature, but I appreciate the positive, or the feedback, not positive feedback, the feedback from you so that then I can take that to our interior design team and see what we can do. The one thing that's still to be added, and it was supposed to occur, and it should occur in the next in the next week or two, um, is the private dining room, the newly established private <coughs> dining room, will have a set of doors, and so that could help mitigate some of that sound echoing. Because if we if there's nobody in there, we can keep those doors closed. Um, so that might be one opportunity. So I'll be curious to to see and hear how that goes. So, but thank you for that feedback. Do you think the tablecloths would help any? I think so, um, and we are adding tablecloths. Um, funny story, those have been ordered for like the last three months, um, and so those were supposed to be available when uh, when we opened, and Majarka was hopeful that yesterday we were going to receive them. So I know that um, some residents commented to her that you, they like the, the individual and not having tablecloths. They like the, the, the table settings, so. But the cloth, the tablecloths will help soften up the dining room. So again, some of that noise, obviously off the hardwood versus a fabric, um, that will, I think, help we, even though it's just a tablecloth. Um, we are looking to add those to the dining room for dinner, probably not for lunch, 
Um, we'll probably keep it more of the casual feel for lunch so that when you come to the dining room, but we'll, we'll kind of play that by ear um, as we kind of go forward. So, what else? I heard other people mention that the lights are too bright. Lights are too bright. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't notice it myself, but I heard a lot of people say it. And that's specific to the dining room again? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, Majark mentioned that right when we opened. Um, she's like, it's obviously very much brighter than it was. Um, and so we do, we're waiting for the lighting control um, as well to, to dim and zone those. Again, I've been told that should be here, but um, we still need that in Bradford Terrace as well. So um, that's been a supply chain um, concern. But once we have that, we'll be able to set them at different levels. So I think that we can address, and I can confidently say we can address that. So. Yes, Ms. Hope. While we're talking about the <clears throat> dining room and bistro, um, I've heard different comments, and it would be helpful to me too. When will they, or will they be able to put the regular kind of coffee that we had before? So it constantly keeps hot coffee or hot water. You know, someone wants hot chocolate or hot tea. Mm -hmm. Because now I know it's even hard for the kitchen, even in that early couple of hours space, to keep that water hot and keep the coffee hot. So is there a possibility, and I heard talk that maybe they need to put in some kind of new electrical connection or something like oh. that was missing in order to do that, that we could have that permanently there. Yeah. That um, so, so the comment, if you couldn't hear that, I'll just repeat was, can we have the coffee machine back? And I know we also, there's been discussion about the juice machine. Right, yes. 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 So <laughs> again, for those of you that were here, before we never had that um, and again from a I get from a functionality standpoint but it's more so from a, a, what we want and, and again um, what we want to provide to you is what we have and that's in those crafts um, the juice machine is just kind of big and doesn't give the best appearance and so that's why we've gone to the smaller juices um, that's why we have the water dispenser. Now the hot water, I think we can absolutely add um, because we've never had that before. We've only had the two coffees and the two decafs, if you remember the old bistro. Um, but if the hot water is, is a good plan if you like that afternoon cup of tea or hot chocolate to your mention. So, um, but the plan is not to have a coffee maker return to that space. I can understand part of that because of the aesthetics. Yes. You know, it's not going to look as attractive for people coming in that open area going through mm -hmm. um, to have that. Yeah. But at the same time, we still want to make sure we're managing your expectations by having that available to you. Um, so. I don't think they have that in Bradford Terrace. They do. And yeah. you can always, you're welcome to go into Bradford Terrace yeah. um, to, to have that available um, as well. So. And back to the lights. What about the lights in there? They in Bradford? Can't be, it cannot be done for movies. And that's that's the same issue we have in yeah. the dining room in the control setting. Oh, control. So um, again, Roman Electric is supposed to put that in um, this week, just like your private rock, dining room doors is supposed to be put in this week. So um, we're not quite there. So um, it will be uh, hopefully the next by the next movie, mm -hmm. next Wednesday night. It's not there. We'll complain. We'll, you will let me know, please. What else? What other thoughts are out there? Well, the health clinic, are the doors being delivered when the doors in the dining room are being delivered? Are you speaking to in the actual clinic space itself? Yeah. yeah. Um, that is a a little bit separate of an issue because those were um, ordered a little bit later. So okay. Um, okay. those are still needed, um, but I don't have an estimated time for when they'll be installed. Okay, so now the podiatrist is using it and Susan's using it for massage. Is there any other, is there any other use going on right now? Yes, great question. So if you're, if you're, um, <coughs> To what Carolyn is speaking to, does everybody know what space she's speaking to? It's on the first floor of Bradford Terrace, right when you come down, what will be the primary administrative hallway. 
right to your left, you see the, the Carolyn Newall clinic there. Um, so the podiatrist is using that, the uh, massage therapist temporarily is using that. Um, next week, you'll see it in the memo, we're restarting our um, blood pressure clinics for you as independent living residents. And so that will be in there. Um, and then long term, there is the goal, and I know that this has been a topic of conversation that came to me from the wellness committee about getting you know, a nurse practitioner or something of that nature in that space. Um, that's a lot, I will say short term, that's not the plan. There is a lot of different things that have to occur in order for that to happen, one being We'd actually have to get licensed through the state to have it as an actual clinic. Um, so that's that's one step. Two, the volume of residents. Um, I've had a nurse practitioner clinic in my past life um, down in Phoenix. There's about 300 residents that supported that clinic that opened one day a week. The volume of residents we have here, I, I think would be potentially difficult for a nurse practitioner um, to, to commit to. Um, but at the same time, I. I'm not, not wanting that because I know that that's a huge uh, need and a want for this community. So um, I'll be reaching out to Catholic Home to see what they're doing and if there's a partnership there of a nurse practitioner that maybe works four hours there, four hours here, maybe a home health agency that wants to utilize that space and that can provide that nurse or nurse practitioner service. Um, but Carolyn, to your short-term answer, It'll be the podiatrist. Um, we're looking at a mobile optometrist that would also use that space. Um, hearing clinic um, as well will be in that space. Essentially any healthcare needs. The dental office right now is still a work in progress um, and we're looking at how we can potentially utilize that. Um, but again, that's where Teresa will, will hold her clinics, um, her, her uh, blood pressure clinics and also any um, nursing type of services. Um, again, we have students and different things of that nature. That's how that clinic space will be used. Thank you. Um, I have a nurse practitioner that visits me through my team and um, she works full time at St. John's and they have 400 apartments, but in their wellness clinic, they have two nurse practitioners, one RN and two LPNs. Wow. And um, Newcastle has had it for quite a long time. When I was at Newcastle, they um, had an RM um, that had always been there. She was the Teresa, essentially, of, of Newcastle. I don't know what they're doing now. Um, but that's interesting. Um, I need to speak with Renee yes. um, at St. John's. Please do. Please do. Um, about what they she doing. works full time there. Interesting. Thank you for. You're welcome. And of course, St. John's is, is much larger, right. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be 130, right? 112. Oh, 112. Because we'll add 30 units and we have 82 currently. Thank you. So. What else? Um, this is about guests coming in and signing in. And I don't know what it was before, you know, pre-COVID or what it is if you had to do that or whatnot, but I just find it like when I have guests coming, like my book club group of six or my Mahjong group of six, you know, for them to stand there and have everybody sign in, it, it just seems kind of off-putting and not real welcoming. They don't mind masking yeah, and that, but is, is this truly necessary or is that going to stop at some point or if I go down to the desk and give a list of guests, can they just yeah, come on up? Yep. You know. So um, prior to COVID, guests could come and go as they pleased. Um, they would we would ask that they would sign in at the front desk at times, but the majority would just go to the apartments and things of that nature. We started with that um, <laughs> check-in sign-in process when we had COVID um, at the height, so two years ago. Um, it's interesting that you say that because we. You know, I've been in the back of my head, you know, kind of thought, okay, do we need to start pulling additional measures back? Although Milwaukee County is at 14% positivity rate right now for COVID, we aren't seeing what we saw two years ago. There was a lot of unknowns, we have to know. 
Um, I agree, there is some of that off-putting, not as warm, welcoming, and also, do we, you know, what does a badge do for your guests as opposed to for East Castle Place's purposes? Back um, when we had COVID protocols in place, I was able to help identify and track down, okay, if Ms. Hip had uh, some guests come in um, and she contracted COVID, we could go back and say, okay, who interacted with her and kind of go back down that road. To be honest, we're really not doing as much of that until we have that case and we talk through it and it's more of that verbal confirmation. Now we do have the backup of the, the, the sign-in process. Um, so short answer is yes, we are going to be relooking at that and how we have guests. Uh, the mask policy is probably going to stay in place for some time, at least, especially now with RSV, flu, and, and things of that nature. And that's primarily because of vaccination status. Um, I know residents have the flu vaccine and COVID vaccines. I know our staff that have flu and COVID vaccines, um, things of that nature from a guest standpoint. Um, again, I trust everybody that walks the doors is feeling healthy. Um, but can we relook at that from a sign in, check the temperature, answer the six questions, get the badge, and go forward? Yes, we can. Okay, soon? Soon. Yes. <laughs> Tyler, I was just going to say I went to the Milwaukee Catholic Home about six weeks ago to check on art for that art, art project here, and all I did was sign in at the front desk. No, no badge check in, no temperature. Now I wasn't going to visit anyone, but all they said was please sign in, and I looked around the whole public area downstairs, and that was it. Okay. So. Much appreciated. So yes, we will. What else? Is Mike going to be permanently on the third floor in the historic building? Is Mike going to be permanently on the third floor in the historic <laughs> building? Uh, good question. Um, <laughs> most likely not. Um, you know, Mike, he, again, credit to Mike because he's been very flexible and I have great appreciation for his flexibility. Um, his office will be no more. Um, he will not have that office space on the second floor. But there are other offices that I'm seeing now that could be purposed for that to get Mike kind of back to that central location. Um, so still working through that. Um, nothing's ever permanent, um, right? Um, but um, for right now, um, probably for the duration of the project, Mike will be there. Um, so come July, we may have a transition again. Um, and again, Mike, being that he doesn't have any staff and any employees, um, he had, does allow a little bit more flexibility because, again, a lot of staff look for him and obviously U.S. residents do, um, but he's been gracious enough to be flexible. So um, I don't want to, to take advantage of that, um, but I need to see kind of where the dust settles to, um, no pun intended with construction. The beauty shop on the lower level of Bradford, is that permanent? It is. It's permanent for the healthcare areas. You will be receiving a brand new salon area okay. in the the Lake Terrace building. Thank you. So where is that? Where would that? So be? off of the fitness center. Okay. Oh. So um, if you're interested to see kind of where that space will be, come see me. Um, I'm happy to pull that up, and, and maybe I can pull it up at the next day if you're okay. interested. But. But yes, the Bradford Terrace, we will have, we, we used to have three salons, if you remember, one in the Water Tower, one in the Contemporary, one in the Bradford Basement. The Bradford Basement was redone in, with intentions <coughs> that that would then serve all of Bradford Terrace healthcare, and the new wellness center would serve all of independent living. By the way, Maria is much loved. Yes, I understand that the PS Salon, um, <coughs> salon experience has gone much better this time around, uh, yes. part two. Thank you. And so I really appreciate your feedback. I know PS Salon appreciates that feedback. <clears throat> again, their partnership has been, uh, again, to their credit, an incredible partnership. Um, and again, kudos to Stacy, because um, Stacy's also the one that's kind of been the lead for that um, relationship as well. Stacy and Maureen. Um, so please give my, uh, give your thanks to, to them as well. Um, as they're helping that communication and operation. So, 
Tyler, I have a question. I don't know if anybody asked a question about the movies and the plans for the theater. Uh, not yet. Okay. So, you have. Have <laughs> yes. The rumor is that there will be a theater in the <clears throat> new building with very limited seating. And my understanding was that the activities that are for East Castle Place in general are an invitation to everyone. So if you're planning a theater with like 12 seats, I think that's a real conundrum. Mm -hmm. So, good question, because yes, there is a, a theater of sorts planned. Um, and we call it a theater, and it's planned for the fourth floor of the Lake Terrace building. The, um, that is a permanent setup. And so, again, assisted living and Bradford Terrace residents have their own space and setting. So that theater is intended for independent living residents, the 112 units. On average, when I've talked with the movie group, you have eight to 12 residents on average going to the movies. Would that be accurate, Betty? Yeah. So I understand the concern of how are you gonna fit 100 residents in a theater when it's these 12, what's the purpose of it? If you're only gonna have 12, which I believe is 16 seats within this theater. Um, and, and to that is, you know, again, spatially, we still have Lindsay Hall. And so if there is some type of event or some type of, uh, you know, um, Super Bowl or something of that nature, the intention would still be to be in Lindsay Hall. We'll still have the large projection screens, not to mention we also have a bar bistro that will also have uh, capacity for up to 40 to 50 residents um, at one time that can view that space. Um, and so again, um, if there needs to be a change uh, to that, uh, again, I've always thought, you know, maybe we do two showings of the same movie, a matinee and a later show, because again, that space is always going to be dedicated for that one purpose, as opposed to Lindsay Hall, that we're trying to get in at seven o'clock, but then we have to reset and then we have to, you know, navigate that. So that was the purpose and thought process behind that theater space. Um, again, it's not your, your typical, you know, 20 to 40 type of auditorium space. Um, we also will have a 20 person classroom type of lecture um, hall, so to speak, on the second floor. Mm -hmm. So that's where committee meetings can be held as opposed to Lindsay Hall. So I think we have maybe a smaller space than what you know we used to, but the diversity of the spaces and purposes of the spaces will be better defined. And so again, in the future, if that theater space were outgrowing it, it makes no sense. There is options uh, really on that fourth floor to expand that, but to set aside a large theater space for one, maybe two nights a week and to utilize that space and didn't quite, um, you know, from a, into your uh, spatial, makes sense. But good question, because yes, that has been a thought and a question. And so again, um, 12 people is not a theater, um, right? That, that's not a, a traditional theater. Um, but when I see that we have eight to 12, eight to 16 residents on average, well, I, know, I know the committee is trying very hard to come up with movies that may attract more residents, so we'll just have to see. Fantastic. And so again, the, so I think it's, to be honest, the capacity is probably closer to 20. Uh, there will be 12 to 16 chairs permanently set in there, but then there's space around there that you can add to. Um, so, but yes, uh, I mean, and again, if we get to that point where there is 30 to 40 individuals, this is really the only space on campus that would fit that anyway. Um, we don't have a, that additional large space, so. I was just wondering if you could please clarify the club room, that there will be a bar for the bartender, is that true? Uh, yes, that is the intention. And will it be a paid bartender? It'll be utilizing your points, uh -huh. part of the food and beverage program, and then obviously anything over and above that would be mm -hmm. paid. Um, that is, you know, going to be interesting how we're going to see how we staff that um, based on the need. Um, you know, we, we tentatively have plans to, to, you know, have that staffed, you know, three to four hours in the evening for starting. 
What's that? that? Well, it would be through the dinner service, essentially. So it'd be like a 4.30 to 7.30 because all of the drinks and everything for your the restaurant experience would come out of there as well. So, um, and again, we're, we're playing with that from a utilization. I mean, maybe it's only open from four to six, but again, once we get that space, we'll work with the food beverage committee and you as residents to see how we want that space to, to look and feel. Um, again, um, we, we do anticipate to have somebody there in the evenings, um, Monday through Friday, hopefully the weekends, you know, things of that nature. Is, is the space open otherwise when it's not staffed? In other words, if you're not ordering anything from the bar, you get tables and yeah. chairs. And Great question. Yes, it will be open. It's open. That's it, again in the in my in my vision, right? <laughs> um, the idea would be that you get your cup of coffee and then head over there in the morning to have your cup of coffee instead of going into the dining room. Then for lunch, that space will be open and potentially that's our new lunch space and keeping the main dining room formal for the evening. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the afternoon, that turns into the card space, the domino space, that the, I want that space to always be utilized um, by residents. It's always gonna be available to you. It's always gonna be open to you. Um, and then in the evening, we'll staff it for a happy hour or things of that nature um, that then you as residents can, can <coughs> utilize. So. Just like the dining room, which I'd love to see, it's there, it's yours, please utilize it. Um, even if you don't see a staff member there, um, again, within reason, of course. Tyler, uh, apparently um, Majarka and the team uh, plans to be able to serve sandwiches in the bar room in the evening, like for dinner time. And if you wanted to just have a hamburger or something, they would serve it in there rather than in the dining room. Yes, grand scheme of things, that's also our overflow um, for the dining room, so that in the event that we have a large theme night that everybody wants to come down to, everybody can be accommodated in there. Um, also, that'll be more of the you know grab and go potentially type of menu, as well as a <coughs> more casual space. Um, again, that's going to be really based upon resident utilization and need. Um, but the idea would be that that would be the more casual spot for lunch and kind of during the day that we would have open. Um, again, maybe it's that bartender at night that works at 11.30 to 7.30 shift that's also your server for lunch and then your bartender in the evening. So could you order a hot dog from that bar at, in the evening instead of your dinner? Yeah, I mean, you would- Yeah, you that's would, what I thought. Yeah, you would just order it much like you do today, I mean, you can get a hot dog in the main right. dining room, right? So that would still be available. So again, I, I think once we can touch and feel that space, much like the main dining room or in Gilman, um, we can- I think it'll be good. Hopefully, I mean, that's, that's why we're doing it, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, that's why you all are, are, are going through the construction, right? Uh, it's to get on the other side. And again, um, the appreciation that I have for you and for your understanding um, as we renovate your home, so to speak, um, is great. And I don't ever want that to be overlooked um, or overshadowed by anything that we're doing because again, you as residents are the priority. You are the reason why we're, we're doing this. And yes, it's to sustain the long-term success of East Castle Place. But if you aren't happy with it, that really causes a conundrum in the short term. So. I don't want to be a pest, but I keep thinking of the money earned from the bar could have a nurse. So you want the cash bar to solve for the nurse practitioner. Well, let me put that on the list of how we're going to get a nurse practitioner. I want a nurse. And then you'd be encouraging people to use that bar. Right. You know what I need to see is someone who has a unit full of sick people with drugs and treatments and all, being hauled away from a sick bed to see someone who maybe has a headache or a little cut or something. I just, I want to come to grips to understand that. And I guess that's what my intention was. Yeah, and, and that goes back to, and again, I, I need to speak with Renee about how they run their clinic because that's great headache bruise. Does that happen just from a nine to five? 
because that's the, you know, from a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're back in a similar situation. Right. Um, so, so yes, um, in a perfect world, we would have a, a non-site kind of IL type clinic. We would never be in urgent care. No. Um, that would never no. be the licensure that, that we would anticipate. But, I didn't mean for it to be that. But yes. I would mean for it when we push our alert button, we get somebody in. I'm thinking of the clinic being able to do. Well, when you push your alert button right now from an emergency standpoint, don't you get somebody? Sure. Yeah, from the health care. Right. It just bothers me. But again, we'd have to staff that clinic space 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because the majority of the pendants being pushed are off hours. Are what? Are off hours. So not that staffed kind of nine to five, because Teresa will respond when she's here <coughs> during the day as well, besides our nurse. And it, the majority is during those, you know, the, the 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. It's our assisted living nurse that don't have that hopefully acuity. Well, let's see what Renee says. Yeah, absolutely. Feel better. I, I, I did not know that, that they have that robust of a clinic. So that's good to know. But they have 400. That Tyler, does factor in. Excuse me, you brought something up that then prompted another question on the part. Sure. You were talking about the construction and how you appreciate the residents, you know, follow the hall that's open. <laughs> um, we have been invited to a couple of marketing things for the new people, you know, Zarletti's and a couple other places, which are fun. And I get that, you know, they've made a commitment. You want them to still stay happy. Um, those of us who have been living through this, for what, over a year? I think it would be really nice of marketing or whomever to put on a huge banquet that uses no point, that is a thank you party for those of us who have been, frankly, putting up with a lot. And that's a great, um, it, that is plan. Okay. And so I, I've had a couple conversations with various residents regarding that, and it's always been the intention of when we have our new space open, that we would have a grand opening. That would be that exact to your point. Um, again, I have a budget for it, and it's, it's larger than that's our Letty budget, obviously with, with 80 to 90 residents. Um, you know, and, and that is the plan, and will happen. It's just when, you know, and we kind of did it with, with the dining room to, to a degree, the New Year's Eve party and things of that nature. Although I do know you use your points for dinner. Um, but I'd rather have the front area open, the bar open. Potentially Lindsay Hall if we can wait, but I'm hearing that maybe we can't. And so again, what can we do in the interim? And so that's you know where I'm partnering with Stacy and, and how can we um, add to you know what the residents are, are working through and, and kind of living through. Um, you know, at the same time, I, I look to you know the services that that you are paying for while you're here, no doubt. Um, but other things that we've done, like the New Year's Eve party, we did the John Gerda event. Um, you know, where we chartered a bus in October um, over to. And I'm blanking on the the place we went. Um, <laughs> But that was for residents as, as a thank you. The, thank you, the Cyrus Museum, as a, as a thank you. And so, what what else can we do? And so, you know, it probably makes sense to to plan. Um, and again, we're planning kind of a grand opening, obviously for the patio as well, doing a large event there. Um, so again, at least on a monthly basis, trying to do something, um, but maybe focus it more um, to your point, Lynn, um, of grander. Um, well, and I don't mean grander, but I just think Dave and I really have enjoyed moving here, and we have enjoyed the company, and we really do. Had we realized just how much construction was going on, I don't know that we would have come when we did. Because I'm sure it was mentioned, but I mean, you just you have no clue exactly sure. how this is going to work. So something every you know couple months doesn't have to be grand, but a recognition that okay, we've got new walls going up, and guess what? You're going to have to get on a bus to go to the pool. So, just a constant sort of a reminder that we're, frankly, paying a lot of rent to live here every month. Yeah. So anyway, just a personal. No, I appreciate that perspective, and again, that perspective has been shared by, by others. Mm -hmm. And again, I, 
that's where I think, you know, I, yes, um, we, we can always do something more um, in recognition of that. Um, at the same time, wanting to make sure we're providing that level of care and service to you, um, as well as, you know, making sure that we're not doing something that's so cost inhibitive that it's affecting you next year. No, I understand that, but it's still like a free, you know, choose something for everybody. I mean, I, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. I right. think it's the recognition that you guys, <laughs> okay, well, you, know, you know what I mean. Right. It doesn't have to be a major thing, but a constant reminder that, okay, we know you guys are. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And that's why we're trying to partner with some of those happy hours and adding the entertainment, things yeah. of that nature, um, to help elevate that experience a little bit. But, but yes. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the fitness mm -hmm. center, um, remind me the pool fitness center that complex. What is the timeline again for us to get back in there? Unfortunately, per the city of Milwaukee, probably not until we get occupancy of the the new building. And when? What's that? June. June. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, and we are trying to push that as quickly as possible. Um, and if I can get temporary occupancy ahead of that, we will. Um, but there's just a lot of mechanicals that run all the way through the building. Um, and uh, that's why, unfortunately, the city's probably gonna say no until we get that full space finished. Um, so, I, I mean, it's demoed. Um, I can share with you the pool doesn't have water in it right now. Um, and. Uh, it's getting a complete overhaul. It will be beautiful, uh, but again, that will work. It's probably getting a little worn on, on many of you, so. And another uh, tag on that is I know you have the arrangement with the uh, Shorewood Fitness Center. However, to go up there, to your point, we had this conversation, um, to, to go up there and get back basically takes the morning. I mean, isn't it possible that we can go up there and get back in a couple of hours rather than all morning? I can check on transportation and see what that looks like. Maybe maybe we can do, you know, for people that want to go for the, it's, a, it's a, like a student class. Yeah. And something, whoever's in the class, we, you know, it's not a big group. And right. the reason it's not a big group is because. It takes all morning. Yeah. I mean, you know, you go, you basically you're waiting around in Shorewood forever to come back because we got to wait for this to happen and those people are doing this and this, you know. I mean, I moved from Shorewood. You could practically walk it if you were in better shape than I am, but we ought to be able to get a car or a bus or something going back and forth at least once in between that. Okay. I mean, I haven't been going for that reason. I got too much going on. I can't give up a half a day for a 25 yeah. minute class. Well, that's good feedback because I hadn't heard that before. Um, and so I'll talk to Scott and Stacy and see A, what the logistics are. Um, because if you're saying we're leaving at seven and we're not getting back till noon and it's a class that starts at eight and ends at 845, that's exorbitant, right? Um, at the same time, and again, not that this would ever be expected, you are welcome to go to Shorewood on your own at any time, and East Castle Place, you know, will take care of that cost for that, and that's an arrangement that we had made and, and um, I thought we had, had announced, but again, so you're welcome to go to the pool on your own accord at any time, um, but that transportation is something that, that we want to offer. So I just need to circle back with Scott and Stacey and understand why that process is taking so long. Judy, can you amplify anything that I said, or you, you know well, more about it because you've been going? What used to take an hour or less to just, you know, run downstairs and splash around for an hour, it now takes a half a day. Yeah. So, again, it's going to be longer than being on site, obviously. Right, and travel time alone, but how can we mitigate that? So, um, let me chat with um, okay. Scott and Stacy and see yeah, what we can do. Yeah, they can modify the schedule so that the people that are just taking the uh, aqua aerobics can get dressed and come back instead of waiting, you know, the rest of the morning. But I, mean, I do appreciate that there still is water aerobics offered. Yeah. 
even though there's no pool here available. Yeah. So let me, uh, okay. I'll circle back with Yeah, because I'd Scott's love to use it, but. Yeah. No, it, it, that way. it makes sense. So. Tyler, do you mind reviewing um, the anticipated completion months for the various projects? Sure. So anticipated completion is end of March, early April for the front lobby, the bar, uh, bistro, the second floor of the, the common areas um, where the general store, salon, and Mike's office used to be. Mm -hmm. um, so that will come you know, end of March, early April. Then we go through this hallway, and this is when Lindsay Hall comes down, as well as part of the first floor of Historic. And that will be probably an eight week project. So in April, May, you're looking at. And then the water, uh, the new Lake Terrace building or the old water tower building will be end of June, early July. So we should be moving in um, into the new Lake Terrace area, best case scenario, end of June. Oh. Um, worst <coughs> case scenario, early July. Mm -hmm. And if we can push that at all and be able to get into that common area space, meaning the fitness and aquatic center, I will be the first one to, to make any, I have to pay the city, you know, <laughs> be happy to do it. Um, because trust me, we don't, we don't want you to have to go to Shoreway either. Um, we know, again, we have something here that um, is why a number of residents moved in is because we have a pool and a fitness center. And so the sooner we can get that back online, much better. It's just unfortunately the initial talks with the city have not been positive just because of the, the occupancy, safety, and security issue. So it also will help when we have water in the pool. So. There was some discussion about the corridors in independent living. Are they gonna be replaced, the carpeting, the green and Cranberry. So the carpeting has not been discussed to be replaced. It's still in, in good shape. Okay. Um, but there is artwork that will be hung on the walls. Okay. And that should begin next week. Okay. And that's due to the artwork art committee. I'd like to say that when the space, the, the main common area space is open and they're ready to put the library together, Linda and I could use some help on putting the library books back in the shelves because they're not in alphabetical order now and we'd like mm -hmm. to get them back into alphabetical order. So if anybody wants to volunteer to help. We'll have a library committee. Sure. Robust. Yeah. Okay. Somebody's yeah. like clearing it out. Yeah. 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 Moving from one place to the other. the fireplace room? Correct. And uh, some of it will be upstairs, right? Correct. Yeah. So and then there will also be another library over in the Lake Terrace area. Oh, there will. Oh, okay. So we'll have three libraries. Okay, so we'll have to figure out what, what goes where. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one other thing. Um, I want to compliment the C.G. Smith company, um, the workers. It's not the company, it's the workers. Um, this morning, I was standing in the bistro, and a some of the men came out of that work area over there and something dropped on the floor. I didn't even see what it was. And one of them leaned down and picked it up and took it with him. I, that's incredible that they would even pay attention to some little thing that fell on the floor. Was it something they dropped or something? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. Well, I didn't see what it was. It was so small, I didn't see what it was. Okay. But well, um, he said, oh, wait, I got to take this. Well, I will uh, pass that along. They always appreciate that. Oh, I think they will. Yeah. You're a great oh, worker. Really. Yeah, they really very, very do good. not make a mess. I in mean, other I areas. haven't been bothered personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're, very, they're very curious when you meet them in the halls. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Awesome. I love that feedback. Good company to go by. They're a great partner. Mm -hmm. What else? I just have a question. When they redo Lindsay Hall, the plans are, I mean, the glass windows. They stay. They're, they're, they're going to stay. They're, be, they're beautiful, but to me, they make the room look very dark. And to utilize that patio out there more, 
to make it more visible to me would be a plus. So I don't know what this. Good question. So the lights all change. This wall comes out, um, so we won't see this anymore. So we never use that, it doesn't actually work. The curtains change. The whole concept and layout, or the layout essentially stays the same. We're not changing any walls outside of this one. New wallpaper, everything. The stained glass windows do stay um, because we don't have a chapel anywhere. Um, and that's been a part of the East Castle kind of history. But I think we'll see a difference because those curtains do come down. And so um, one thing that you mentioned is, do you think door operators, meaning that you can press a button much like the bathrooms, would ease that access to that patio area? Do you think that would encourage? Because we've never used that, I mean, again, it was awesome to see mm -hmm. residents yeah. utilizing that patio space this year. Yeah, right. And I would love for that to continue. Um, yeah, to make it more accessible. To make it more accessible. More visible. More visible. Well, at least one door, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not both, but maybe Just one, one door. And not have curtains. Right, um, and, and I don't know what the concept is, I'll have to check, but um, the other thing is we, when we used that, we didn't have that available. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's the, I think that's the reason why that area wasn't mm -hmm. as utilized because it is smaller and everybody just hadn't right across the hallway to the main courtyard. Um, but I would love to continue to see that space utilized as more of a private kind of quiet setting. It is. Um, is. Is that door unlocked right now? I mean, I have found you can't get in and out. I mean, are we supposed to use it or not use it? I mean, the gate should be closed. If it is locked, it's probably locked because of the cold in, in winter. Okay. Um, but, but your key it's would a open. Nice day. I mean, is somebody going to keep the door unlocked so we can use the patio from? I mean, access from from this space. Sure, um, we we can absolutely do that. Um, it just seems like it's locked all the time. Um, and I understand it's winter and all that. Yeah. But the minute they quit uh, the buffet where we could go out and eat, the minute they did all that, they locked the doors. <laughs> It was still nice then. <laughs> well, we'll get we'll those doors unlocked because your key that opens the gate should open those doors as well. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Should. I say should loosely. So. Okay. You can't hold me to that 100%. But if you have your keys. Well, when I try it. Well, and if you have your keys, we can try it right after this. Anything else? Well, I was going to say you took all took all the updates uh, that I was going to share with you. Um, again, you'll you'll see another update this week um, from me. And uh, again, thank you. Uh, I think that majority has to be complimented. We have a great wait staff right now. Yeah. Do. Come a come a little uh, long ways. Um, that's one thing that I I have heard, unfortunately, still. Um, that there's some of the area communities aren't able to open their dining rooms um, fully. Um, I believe St. John's is only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday wow. right now due to staffing. Um, mm -hmm. So again, we're, we're fortunate and that's kudos to Majorca and Tanya and Tim and Steph, our leadership team in there, but also, I mean, you look at Gary and, and Nick in the dish room. I mean, they're, they're pretty awesome. Because without those two, you can't really cook without dishes. And I don't think we want to go to paper plates. So that would be my solution. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Okay, thank I you. appreciate thank you. it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, enjoy the mild January. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. It was wonderful.